I truly can't believe that I have never told this story on the internet before. Because as soon as it happened to me, I was like, this is story time worthy. Also, hi, I miss being a story time YouTuber. Welcome back to my channel. This story happened to me two years ago, around this time of year, and since I am an aspiring artist, the topic of selling my work comes up a lot. I like to talk about it with other artists just to hear their trial and errors and their rates, their prices, whatever. Selling your original work can be quite difficult because you either don't want to part with the piece or it's just really difficult to name a price because I can speak on behalf of all artists that so many hours so much thought so much time and dedication goes into making each piece so of course you want to price it as such but it's also weird to be like hey give me this big amount of money i mean it's so valid but it's kind of difficult to do sometimes because people expect discounts people expect a lower price i even have had people ask me if they instead of paying for my art can pay me with a shout out on their instagram of 200 followers don't ever do that. So anyways, the topic of selling my work comes up and I always, more often than not, end up telling this specific story because it's probably the craziest thing that's ever happened to me and I genuinely can't believe I have not told this before, but I'm so glad that I finally am. So take a seat, buckle up, get a snack, get a coffee, get a glass of wine honestly does anyone else watch those asmr eating videos um where people eat those like 700 dollar giant japanese grapes well these aren't them but uh those are pretty big grapes um, let's get the microphone nice and close hey guys <laughs> okay fuck this i give up what let's get into the story so I've been working on and off at this amazing salon in my hometown for about four years now. And this was two winters ago. Okay, so I was in the 12th grade. I was in my senior year of high school, a ripe 17. And I was working part time at this salon. So the salon's open from Tuesday until Saturday, um, about like eight or nine hours a day. And of course, because I was in high school, I couldn't work throughout the week. So I would come in on Saturdays only. However, I'd work there full time in the summer for a couple years prior. And I'm like super tight with everybody who works there and they're all wonderful people. And my boss, who is incredible, is a huge supporter of me and my art, and my artistic endeavors. So he asked me to bring in some paintings to hang up around the salon. He's so lovely and he loves having the place be really artistic and vibrant. So there's a lot of local Canadian artists who have their paintings up all around the salon. Um, and he asked me to bring in some of my work. I brought in like three or four pieces, I think. And this was one of them, okay? This tiger guy, he was one of the pieces I brought in. That piece you probably recognize from one of my most popular videos, the, the stuff artists say. I was actually working on that one at the time that I was filming it, which was like five or six years ago now. I think that was my biggest piece that I had ever done so far, like just size wise, uh, even detail wise. And so like I said, this was my senior year. Around this time is the time for university applications, like college applications. So that's kind of when you're gathering all your work, gathering all your portfolio, gathering your resumes, sending them into every university you want to go to. I was applying for art for painting. So um, for the most part, a lot of these schools were kind of around Canada. So they would only require you to take a really high quality digital photo and then send it to them that way. However, OCAD, which is the school that I go to now, they require like an in-person interview. So you bring your portfolio in, you bring your work in and you talk about it. And that's, that's like a really important skill to have to be able to present your work and to be able to talk about it. That was a really important component of the application process. So at this time, I think the tiger piece was in my portfolio and I intended on bringing it to the in-person interview. So that means I didn't want to sell it. I, did, I was not intending on selling it. No plans on selling that piece. I simply brought in these works just to be shown. I think I ended up selling a couple other pieces. But they were smaller ones that I just made for fun and I didn't use in my portfolio. So I ended up selling those ones, but the tiger one, I was pretty adamant on keeping it in my portfolio bringing it into OCAD for the in-person interview and not selling it. Like I said, I only work Saturdays at the salon. So on like a Wednesday or something, it was like in the middle of the week, so I wasn't in the salon, I get a text from the receptionist um, and she says, hey, like someone wants to purchase your tiger painting. So my coworkers would tell me that this guy would come in and he would just stand in front of my painting and just stare at it. And just stare at it and they would be like, hi, sir, can I help you? Because usually... 
I mean, some men do come to the salon, but the majority of the clientele is women, and if there's any mans in there, it's because it's their boyfriends or their husbands, or it's the very few male clients we have, so they would be in there getting their hair done, not just standing around. So it was really suspicious behavior, and they would always question him and be like, Sir, can I help you? Like, is there something you want to, like, is... Is there something we can help you with? He would just not respond and he would just keep staring at the painting and then one day he was like I want to buy this and then they were like I don't think she's selling it But I can ask for you and I was like hey, that's so nice uh, I actually have to bring it in for my interview So I'm not selling it right now, but perhaps in the future after all the applications are done She says okay. No worries. I'll tell him that I think a week goes by and I go in that Saturday and I think my coworkers my coworkers are just telling me, yeah, like he seemed a little off. He was a really, really tall, like Asian man. In Asian culture, tigers are a really valuable symbol, so he seemed really adamant on buying it. Another week goes by, and I go in the next Saturday, and my coworkers show me that he brought in a little present for me. It was a pretty harmless gift. It was like a silk scarf with tigers all over it. Like really, it was a really pretty scarf actually. I don't know why I didn't keep it. Probably because it's fucking cursed. He brought in a tiger scarf as kind of a gift, being like, "Hey, let me buy your piece of the tiger, like a little, a little bribe or something." I would love to keep milking this and keep getting presents and um, have him try and bribe me to sell him this piece. But I actually need it for the in-person interview. He kept dropping off these different presents. So first it was the scarf, then it was a pair of gloves that had tigers on the front of them, like fingerless gloves with tigers on the front of them. And like every time he would drop something off, he'd be like, just tell her to like think about it. Like just, just tell her to think about it. And it was like, okay, great. I literally could use the money right now. I have no problem selling you this piece. I just can't at the moment because I need it to get into university. Ugh. Then one week I find out from OCAD that they actually are no longer doing the in-person interviews. They decided to cancel the in-person interviews. They said you can upload digital files and that's all you need to do. You do not need to come in. You do not need to bring in your work. So, so the first thing I thought of was, well, let me secure that bag, let me get that coin, and I message the receptionist and I say, you can absolutely sell it to him. And with the help of one of my other coworkers, we decided the price, I was gonna price this piece at $500, cash only, upfront, and then you have the piece, it's all yours. And I think the highest price I had sold something for prior was like 300, like 200 or 300 but I'd never priced my work that high before, so this was like a huge milestone for me because he seemed like he really, really wanted the piece. If you really want that bad that you're gonna like try and bribe me with gifts, then like I'll price it as high as I want. So, and he was, he was down to buy it. So I come in the next week. I don't work reception at the salon, I'm an assistant, so I'm always kind of moving around, washing hair, doing laundry, cleaning things. I'm like all over. I, don't, I rarely sit at the desk, but sometimes I like to hang out there and chat with the receptionist or just like hang out, grab a seat. Um, and I'm hanging out behind the counter and I see the scarf kind of piled on top of this book. And I look at the book and I'm like, is this another present? And they're like, yeah, like he brought that in for you too. We just didn't want to show you to like scare you or anything. Cause the book is called, you are dead. <laughs> the book was titled, you are dead. Like, could have been a book about tigers too. You could have kept a theme, but you are dead. Am I? Am I? <sighs> That's not even the worst part. That's not even the worst part. I'm looking at the book and I'm skimming through it. And I guess they hadn't even opened it because they didn't know about this. And I'm going to insert pictures here because this shit fucking terrified me. He wrote in like almost all of the pages. He drew all these strange symbols that I can't decipher. And like, they seem like they come from some cult ass bullshit. And he's writing the price. He wrote, he's writing all the information that the receptionist had given him about selling it. $500 cash only. He wrote the address of the salon. He wrote this made up store, like Sebastian's beauty salon or Sebastian's candy store. It was something really weird and like made up and like it seemed like a deranged little kid had written it, but this man is like in his 30s, dare I say 40s. I don't even know. I, I had never met him up until this point. And that's another thing. That's another, that's a whole, that's another thing. I had never met this guy. Never seen him in person. My paintings at the salon did not 
have a little artist note underneath it. It did not have a card. It didn't say my name anywhere on the on the work. It didn't say my name anywhere. The receptionist didn't even tell him my first name. Didn't even bring it up. Didn't even say my name. She swears on her life. And I, I literally went around and I asked every single person in the salon, did you tell him my name? Even my first name. They didn't tell him anything about me except I was the artist who painted the tiger. Like that was, I was just known as the painter or the artist. They never disclosed my name. And in this book, many times he writes my full ass name. He writes my full name. And he's, the weird thing is he's, he's writing these checks. Like he's, he's literally like making his own checkbooks with the pages of this weird, scary book that he gave me. As if that's like valid. Like if I took that to the bank, they would laugh in my face. But like then there was like these weird mantras, like see it, be it, do it. He kept referring to himself as the prophet. Oh, and then like, and then inside one of the pages folded up really small was like this weird demonic drawing. And I don't know, it's in Chinese, I want to say. So who knows, it could not be demonic at all. But look at that. Like, Look at that. He kept saying I won the invitation. Like he just kept writing that throughout the pages. Sarah Minix, you won the invitation. You won the invitation. And he kept referring to himself as the mayor and the president in charge. My coworkers didn't even want to show me the book because they thought I would be scared. And they, they didn't even know about the pages inside. They just knew that I got a book titled You Are Dead. And they thought that was terrifying. Terrifying enough that they didn't even want to show me. Let alone these little notes that he left me inside the book. So I show my coworkers and they're all like, you have to call the police, call the police, alert the authorities. And I'm like, on what terms? Like he spooked me with some weird notes. Like as scared as I was, I didn't know what I would go to the police with. I don't know what I could justify it as. And he hadn't actually done anything in person that scared me, at least not yet. This story is giving me a headache. So the next Saturday rolls around and on Saturdays, the receptionist isn't in. So sometimes I'll have to hop behind the counter and cash people out or just check people in. I'll just do a little bit of the receptionist job here and there. And so this was like first thing in the morning. This was about a week after I had confirmed with my coworkers that yes, you may sell it to him. This man walks in, this very, very tall Asian man. He's wearing a trench coat with all of this kind of similar symbols and drawings and words drawn or painted all over the arms, all over the front and all over the back of it. So he's like wearing his only custom designs. <laughs> and he walks up to me and he's like, is Sarah in today? And I'm at the computer. <laughs> I'm at the computer and I'm like, oh, sorry, she's actually not in today. Can I take a message? And I pretend to be another bitch because I don't want him knowing my face. I don't want him knowing what I look like, even though he knows my full name. So he probably already knows what I look like. I did it for my own safety, as you can imagine. But my acting job, like A1 though, so. Hands me an envelope and he goes, can you give this to her? And I open it up and there's $500 in cash, bitch. It was the most money that I've ever held in my hands at one time. And it all came from my art. And I was very proud of that. So there's like a silver lining to the story for sure. Except there's more. So he gave me the money and he walked out and he didn't even take the painting. So I think again, in the middle of the week, he came back for it. So then again, I continued to come in every Saturday throughout that winter. And um, my job as an assistant too, is to go pick up coffees, lunches. I'm like a little intern. You know how like suburbs have like Main Street and it's just like a bunch of little shops on one long road. We're kind of like in the middle of Main Street and then towards like the end of it, there is this really cute family owned cafe that we usually pick up food from. So I drove down the street and I park in front of this cafe. And I get out. I go and grab the food and I have the bags of food and I'm going back into the car and as I'm going back into the car, I look across the street and this motherfucker is just walking around with my big painting and I'll, I'll grab something for like size comparison. So this guy is just walking around out in public, la di da, as if it's some sort of like casual Gucci handbag, but it's not. It's a piece of fine artwork. 
a pretty big one too. I want to say it was even bigger than this. Like it was, it was the next size up from this one. Keep in mind, this was like two or three weeks after he had picked it up. So there was no reason he should have just been carrying it around. No reason at all. At all. I and a few other people that I know saw him carrying it around at various points throughout the month. He would literally carry it around with him everywhere he went as though it was a purse or a handbag or a briefcase. But it's a pain. And so this, this is, this is, this is where we come to the end of our story. One day he was sitting in the cafe, the, the one I was just talking about, the family owned cafe. He was sitting, drinking a cup of coffee and doing like a still life drawing study of an empty beer bottle. Like he just had like a sketchbook and he was just sketching this beer bottle in front of him. And because this cafe does not have a liquor license, you can't have liquor bottles. Even if they're empty, you can't have liquor bottles in a place that doesn't have a liquor license because if someone were to come in and see that, they could get shut down real easy. So one of the people who work at the cafe come up to him and they say, they're like, hey, I'm gonna have to ask you to uh, discard that bottle because we can't have it in here, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, okay, but he ignores her and he continues to draw it. She comes back and she goes, seriously, like we could get in big trouble if, if you don't get rid of that thing. And he goes, okay. And he just keeps drawing it. And then she comes back again and she goes, if you don't get rid of it, we're gonna have to ask you to leave. And he goes, no. I'm not leaving. I'm not getting rid of this bottle. So she goes, no, you, you're you gonna have to leave. And he doesn't leave. So of course the next step would be to call the authorities. So the cops get called and he's refusing to leave and they start getting to a little bit of a, a, a little bit of an aggressive struggle where the police are trying to escort him out but he doesn't wanna leave. And can you guess what he had with him during all of this? That's right, my painting. So him and the police and my painting all get into a little kerfuffle. And as the police are struggling to escort him, his foot goes right through the canvas. I don't, I still to this day don't know if it was an accident or if he was just like, I'm mad, boom, and just kicks through the, I don't know. And keep in mind, I didn't actually witness this whole thing go down. Um, but the owner of the cafe and the whole salon staff like were, were super tight We pick up food from them every day and they knew that it was my painting So of course they had to tell us so I heard it from the cafe owner who witnessed it all who experienced this It's still unclear to me if it was deliberate or if it just kind of happened with uh, the whole struggle with the police um, So yeah, now he's in jail My painting is in shambles and so am I still to this day. So yeah, that's the story of how I sold a painting for $500 to a very deranged man who ended up destroying it. Ta-da! I've been kind of dying to tell that story for a long time and I hope it was worth it. I hope it was crazy. I hope you're shook because I definitely was when this was all taking place. Um, however, I'm safe now. I haven't heard from him because I'm pretty sure he's in prison. Rest in peace to that tiger painting. You were a good one. I still got to keep the money, so I'm not mad about it. That's the story of my weirdest painting sale ever. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching to this point. If you have, um, please make sure to subscribe to my channel or check out some of the other videos that I make. Um, all of my social medias will be linked in the description, so... Have a beautiful day. Love you so much. Bye.